In this video, we're going to look at empirical and molecular formula. So we're going to look at what do we mean by these two types of formulae, and we're going to look at how to calculate them from data. So on the board there, you've got three organic molecules, ethene, benzene, and ethanoic acid. And this first column is their molecular formulae. So ethene, two carbons, four hydrogens, benzene, six carbons, six hydrogens, and ethanoic acid, two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. So that's the molecular formula. That's the actual formula of the molecule. So if you have a look at the empirical formula column, so this one here, can you see what's meant by empirical formula before I tell you? So it looks like it's a simplified formula. What we've actually done is we've found the simplest whole number ratio of each of the atoms in the molecule. So in ethene, with its two carbons and four hydrogens, the actual simplest ratio is CH2. So for every carbon, there's two hydrogens. Benzene, for every carbon, there's one hydrogen. And in ethanoic acid, for every carbon, there's two hydrogens and an oxygen. So the empirical formula is defined as the simplest whole number ratio for the atoms of each element in a compound. And the molecular formula is simply the actual number of atoms of each element in a compound. So we'll just take a quick look at ethene again. So we've got there its molecular formula is C2H4. And the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio of each atom, is CH2. What that actually means is for every mole of carbon, there are two moles of hydrogen. So we need to start to be thinking about moles now, because when we go into the calculation in a moment, you'll see that it's all about the moles of each type of um, element in the compound. And just a quick reminder, how do you calculate the number of moles, the n term? It's calculated by dividing the mass that you've got by the relative mass of the atom. So we'll start off with this question here. What is the empirical formula of the compound containing 0.6 grams of carbon and 0.2 grams of hydrogen? If you want to have a go yourself before we go through the solution, then obviously press pause and then play on when you're ready. So because this is the first calculation, I'm going to break it down into um, a step-by-step -step approach. And this is the way I was taught years and years ago, and it's never, ever let me down. So I always make this guarantee to my students, if you follow this method to the letter, you will never ever get these wrong. So, step one, you knock up a table for the elements present in this compound. So we've got two elements, we've got carbon and hydrogen. Sometimes, as you'll see, there are more than two elements, uh, but we'll start with an easy one. So, step one, knock up your table. Step two, you enter the masses for each element into your table. So we've got 0 0.6 grams of carbon, and 0.2 grams of hydrogen. Step three, you divide by the MR. So you divide the 0.6 grams of carbon by its MR, which is 12. And obviously you divide the 0.2 by one. And if you think about what you've just done there, that's actually giving you the number of moles present of each atom. Before we go on to step four, if we just think about what this line is telling us, it's telling us that for every 0.05 moles of carbon, there are 0.2 moles of hydrogen. But remember, empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of each of the atoms in the compound. So what we do next in step four 
is we divide both of these numbers by the smallest one. Obviously 0 0.05 is the smallest of these two. And that's going to give us 1 here. And then if we divide the 0 0.2 by the 0 0.05, the smallest, we get 4. So you can see now we've got a, a simple whole number ratio of 1 to 4. So what that means is the empirical formula for this compound is CH4. So there's the four steps. And like I said before, if you follow these steps, you'll never get these calculations wrong. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the same kind of question, but with the um, data presented in a slightly different format. So don't panic, the steps don't change. So we've got this question now. A compound has the percentage composition as shown below. Calculate its empirical formula. And we're told that it's 34.6% copper, 30.5% iron, and 34.9% sulphur. So if you want to have a go at this yourselves, feel free. Uh, one clue for you. Treat the total mass of the compound as 100 grams. So step one, we've drawn our table. Step two, well in the last one we put the masses in. And the great thing about this method is, if the data is presented as percentages, you just put the percentages in exactly the same way. And the, the, the hint I gave at the start, if you think about the total mass of this compound as 100 grams, if it's 34.6% copper, that means it's 34.6 grams worth of copper. Step three, we divide by the MR of each element. And remember, that's going to give us the moles because effectively we're dividing a mass by the MR. And there we've got the moles for each of the elements. Now, obviously, I'm not going to write the whole calculator value down, but I'm also not going to round too early. So I'm giving three significant figures to my moles answers. Step four, we divide everything by the smallest of these moles, which is 0.545. And we get these answers here. So obviously that divided by itself is going to be 1. This has come out as a whole number of 2. This number here, I've written down the first four numbers of the calculator value. Just to make a point really. This number here, that's so close to 1. That we can safely say that that is 1. It's very important that you don't round um, too much. So... For example, if that was 1.5 or 1.4 or 1.3, you certainly couldn't round that back to the 1 or up to the 2 if it was 1.5. But 1.003, well, that's safe to say that it's, it's 1. So we're just going to say that that is indeed 1. So, of course, that means that the empirical formula for this compound is Cu... FES2. I think we're ready now to move on to the molecular formula. I'm going to use this question in blue to do that. So we're told that a compound containing only carbon, hydrogen and oxygen was analysed and it was found to contain 38.7% carbon and 9.68% hydrogen. We're also told that it's MR its relative mass was 62. So we've got to calculate the empirical and the molecular formula for this compound. So I'm presenting the data in the way that we've, we've been shown. We've got our table for our three atoms and there's the data that we're told so far. So we've given two percentages and the MR. So obviously the first hurdle we've got to jump over is we need to work out the percentage of oxygen in the compound. So it's obviously going to be 100% minus these. 
So these add up to 48.38%. So 100 minus that is 51.62%. So that would obviously be the first mark if this was an exam question. So we've divided those percentages by the MRs and we've got our moles in green there to three significant figures, 3.23, 9.68, 3.23. So remember next step, divide everything by the smallest of those numbers. And that gives us 1, 2.9971. One. And remember, when you get numbers this close to the next number, we obviously can say that that's 3. So we can see now that our ratio is obviously 1 to 3 to 1. So the empirical formula must be CH3O. So we now need to factor in the extra piece of information. We have to work out what the molecular formula is, what's the actual number of atoms of each element in this compound. So you might already be thinking you can see a way through this. If you can't, don't worry, I'm going to explain it now. So if this was the molecular formula, it would obviously have to add up to the MR. So the best thing to do is to work out the mass of the empirical formula. So we've got carbon, so that's 12, plus 3 hydrogens, that's taken us up to 15, and we've got an oxygen in there, so that's going to take us up to 31. So the relative mass of the empirical formula is 31. So you can probably see the link now, the jump to the 62 MR, well that's obviously double that. So what that means is, there must be twice as much of everything in the compound. So basically all we need to do is double up all of the atoms. So the molecular formula is obviously C2H6O2. Now just in case the numbers aren't as easy as that in other questions that you'll do, all we did there mathematically is we divided the MR by the, the mass of the empirical formula to find out the factor that we have to multiply the empirical formula by. So in this case the factor was 2, so we doubled all the atoms out in the empirical formula to give us our molecular formula. You can see I've included a fifth step there, and that's in case you're asked to find the molecular formula. So remember what we did, we divided the MR given by the mass of the empirical formula, and that gives us the factor that we need to multiply by to get the molecular formula. Sometimes you'll find that the mass of the empirical formula is the MR, in which case you don't need to do anything. That's that means that the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same. So like I said, I've been using this method now for ooh, 30 years and it's never, ever, ever let me down. And just a final reminder about um, rounding. So it's safe to say that those numbers are rounded to these numbers. And also just remember um, to give at least three significant figures when you work out your moles.